so, uh, uh, hello, 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 everyone. This hello. is Irene with Soga Talks. Hello, I hope everyone doing well. We are today talking about tech trends with Debashi's data. Hello, Debashi's, how are you? Uh, it's a splendid, Irene. It's really an opportunity talking to you. And uh, to be honest, I'm a fan of your solos. I listen to your all the, you know, the, the broadcasts and broadcasts, I, I'd rather say, with the, all the thought leaders. And yeah, I believe it's, a, it's a really a, a splendid opportunity for me. Thank you. Thank you so very much for being here because I do want to speak with the audience for a second to remind everyone that I do talk with influencers and thought leaders and amazing, amazing individuals weekly. And I post on YouTube and LinkedIn and Twitter and now on major podcasting platforms. So if you're listening and if you're a tech enthusiast, if you have something to add, Please share, please share these talks because we do want audience to grow and yeah, find the appreciation of the amazing, amazing age we live on and finding some answers, you know, with fantastic, fantastic leaders that are so kindly green speaking with me. So Debashis, thank you so very much again for being here. Now we announce the topic. So we're going to talk about hot stuff. We will talk about metaverse and decentralized finance and NFTs and all good stuff, you know, all the world towards road to AGI, uh, artificial general intelligence. So, wow, that's a lot to cover, Debashi. So let's start somewhere, you know, uh, metaverse. It's on everybody's mind. It's on everybody, I don't know, imagination these days. So how do we define it? People say it's virtual reality only. It's some high tech that's not even available to everyone, but others say it's just the same as cyberspace before. So what do you think? Is it new age or it's a very familiar territory that we're just extending to new highs? Mm -hmm. Correct. So it's a really splendid question, Irene. I'm really excited. So before I start, I just give one line and disclaimer, and as usual, I give it that whatever I'm saying is my personal view. It doesn't corroborate to my employer. It's just a, just an official we say. And, and, and when you are talking about metaverse, it's really uh, something great. So the question will come, is a, is a hype or something reality what we do? Uh, what I will say, the metaverse is basically an evolving concept. Long back in 1992, there's a lot of the movies came, which is coined the call metaverse. Meta is beyond, which is actually a uh, Facebook all incorporated the name, the meta, and metaverse become the beyond the universe. So uh, it means that moving towards the air augmented reality and virtual reality. So to tell you the in, in simple terms that when we when I was young, when I was start chatting with Yahoo chat, so we are using the smileys and other parts. So basically, we are trying to communicate in a different way, uh, and then it advanced what it come air and veer. Uh, so the communication mode has evolved the gradual times. Metaverse is not a new concept. It was long before. Now it has it is being in, implemented in a bigger way, like the in the Facebook, which is moved to Meta. Or even you know there's uh, you can see the Microsoft has come mesh for the empty the Microsoft Teams. They have a version called Mesh where you can Use, use the more of the avatars more predominantly because uh, everybody we want to come out of a reality and go to something beyond reality to, as uh, you know, the, uh, we call it air or we are driven board. So it is all connected thoughts and connected, you know, uh, devices and, and connecting the globally to different uh, the platforms, which we call is metaverse. And this metaverse is not only is uh, limited to the Facebook or the Microsoft, it's already moved to different fashion industry. Even uh, Gucci has uh, engaged a couple of their collaborators who are giving this concept because uh, it will have more client engagements. Uh, and furthermore, metaverse also will not be able to uh, survive in the wave two. So, Web3 is not metaverse, but Web3 might enable, uh, you know, the in a better way, the metaverse. So when I say it is all interconnected, so metaverse, Web3, NFT, or DeFi is all the future, what you can call 
in the Iron's language, the tech trends, which is the future tech trends. So I'm a, basically, I'm a fan of Nikola Telsa. So long time before he talks about uh, something that he was talking that if we can have the, uh, we can connect, then the, the world will be a global brain, like a global Wi-Fi. So uh, people say some of the article was talking, I was reading the, they say that Nikola Telsa was talked about the smartphones, not that. What he was talking about, he was talking about integrated connected devices, connected throat, and he was talking to us the roadmap for AGI. So AGI is a big discussion because what we talk against and for, but we do not understand the roadmap to AGI and what is the interpretation of AGI first. We need to understand that. So, uh, uh, so, so, so what I would say, the tech trends are not in silos. So when you're talking about metaverse, metaverse is evolving concept. It's a ER, VR, and interconnected. What you'll drive, it will drive already is a different NFT, non-fungible tokens. Uh, it will evolve in a better way, which will move to way three, obviously, which, which will be more have, uh, it will change the perception we see the webs. And mostly it will change the perception we communicate between ourselves. It is maybe in personal terms, commercial terms, or financial transactions. Uh, and you, you also, you know, you, you might be heard of the, the Bitcoins, the uh, Ethereums, the several things. So this is also another trend which is changing because now you have heard of uh, the central bank digital currency and they have come out with a lot of guidelines and I keep posting in the LinkedIn as well. So, uh, so you see that what will uh, eventually will happen, we will have the interconnected, as we already we have interconnected economies and even our financial systems or you know, the cross market and interoperability of different financial markets in a different way. So uh, even uh, the, the mode of the payments, which is already changed, it will change. So when you're talking about technology, change in technology, what Irene was telling about how the overall, so technology, what it is predominantly is doing, it is changing the way we think about, that it, is, uh, it changes the way we do our interaction with people that we can say the metaverse, the way we are interacting with ourselves and internet that will go through the web three, and the way we will interact our payments uh, or other parts that is a day fee or can say non-fungible tokens and which will actually move to obviously uh, the central bank digital currencies, uh, which is in, in, in the roadmap already and the many of the countries are already forefront. And also what is the major thing is that the artificial intelligence, uh, which is driving everything. But one of the things I was talking also offline the other day with Irene also, and even I was talking to most of the thought leaders uh, to interacting with them to, to you know, the improving uh, our understanding globally. So one of the key things we need to focus on trust by the AI. So if you see that the, the recently, as I, I, Irene, you must be, uh, we are talking the, the same documents that we, I just said in the, in the LinkedIn sometime, uh, which is issued by European commissions. They're talking about for the autonomous vehicles, they have given the, the guidelines, the one of the couple of guidelines that is the EP, so ethical principle, one, two, three, four. The first principle is very important that, you know, the, uh, the, you need to, it should be the independence of the humans, right? So uh, the humans should not be manipulated. So that is the one of the things when you coming the defects or any other defect is something that's very, uh, you know, the, it's not a very, uh, I cannot say it's a very advanced because it's only visual presentations. But there are other way the autonomous vehicles of anywhere you, when you are interacting, because uh, most of the cases even now there's the GPT three and uh, OpenAI's GPT three or IBM Watson. So many of the they have already too fast to uh, the Turing test. So uh, the one of the key challenges will be there. So the how much the AI is trustworthy, whether they can manipulate us. And if they can manipulate us, that will be dangerous. So this is the principle, four principle they have given. So that is the key documents they have come, the JPC documents, which has come out in December. 
by the European Commission for the Autonomous Vehicles. And one of the, the other points I also I, I, I want to talk through that the last uh, the, the fourth principle EP, the explainability, it should not be a black box. So you need to understand the, how the algorithms works because the machine can learn it himself itself. That's, that's, that's something is that uh, the auto learning uh, because machine learning is different, uh, deep learning, but other things that machine how they can learn independently. And 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 one is more uh, more it will be you know the something you have we have to be very careful when they will try to operate themselves they can write the code uh, them for themselves so it means that uh, the two things is most important in trust of the AI one is that explainability that's a principle four by the European Commissions and number one is that it, it should not be you know the, for the human. It should, should not be a. Uh, it it should give the the independence for the human. So it means that uh, the overall there is a rapid changes uh, in the in these cases. Even the financial technology we talk about fintech also. Fintech is all about the changing about DeFi and other part. Even the transformations because uh, when we'll have AR and VR, uh, so we will our shopping experience will be different. The metaverse is not a Facebook, so it is metaverse is also business. Uh, it is uh, the the perception. Yeah, you're saying something, Irene. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Debashi. So we did. Uh, you did touch actually, right, on high reach trends over there, right, in the opening statement. Let's talk about consumers. Okay, they conduct transactions with organizations hundreds or thousand times a day. All right, and trust. Trust, credibility, reputation becomes more and more prevalent in everybody's mind. So, a question to you: When currency is consumer data, all right, and we seem to be engaging in a lot of free transactions, which are not free, okay? We know that much that we are trading our data in exchange of services and goods, which is awfully convenient. Awfully wonderful. So in this new world of Web3 that all of hopefully transparency and trustworthy transactions between the parties, right? Where the future lies before we figure out, you know, all the AI ethics, you know, be between all the regulations and good stuff that's happening and we speak, yet consumers feel that we, you know, that we are exposed. They're exposed nevertheless. So how should we look at the yeah, consumer data in exchange of valuable information? Uh, so you're spot on, Irene. So what are the key challenges that in the vast majority of the consumers, they're not very tech savvy? Even when I, I was young days, I was not very tech savvy. So I grew up I mean, slowly and keep on updating. So uh, they do not know. The general consumers, they do not know what is the technology behind it, be, be it the consumers I'm talking about, as a, as a, they know only the experience, customer engagement, CX and other part, but they do not know the, what is the, the technology behind that. It's very important for them to know that they are talking about, you know, they should have the independently understand the, and, 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 and review the, the experience. Because if you see that one, that when you're talking about engaging, so if they get, can get, uh, get them, get, uh, get them more engaged, where they can drive or you can say manipulate their decisions, that will be a way at the AI. So that is the way they cannot have the judicious decisions. That's one of the key challenges that we have to be very careful. That is the I was talking about trust toward the AI and regulation of the AI is very important for that. That's a very US spot on. And other part is that when you're talking about financial transaction, thousand of data transactions, there are two aspects we need to see. One aspect is that uh, the transactions, because many of the cases, you know, uh, when it's coming about NFTs or blockchain, blockchain, so the secure technology. So uh, the, it, it is uh, when you have a different uh, the transaction, the platform, payment platform, or interoperability with different payment system is one of the key challenges because different countries have their own pay payment platform and how it will flow into, uh, they, there is also a challenge and they have also come out with a, a lot of guidelines by even the European commissions as well as this process. So uh, that is the, uh, the interoperability different payment system, how the central bank digital currency will come, that is actually drive everything 
And this is one of the pain points we need to understand. And all countries should have the more collaboration and we should stay first in a faster way. And also other point before I forget, the payment system when you're talking about is a very huge risk for the cybersecurity because now it is quantum computers. So quantum computers can break the many of those you know, security the barriers. It's an access of this quantum computer. So, so these are the reasons the payment system you are talking about, everything, consumer, the keyword, consumer awareness is very important. So AI awareness, technology awareness for the consumers, one of the key things, it should be driven by the different levels, government, le government levels, academicians levels, and actually who drive the consumer consumerism, or you can say the voice of the consumers or consumer movement, I can rather say, they should uh, inform the consumer the proper way. They, they, they should not be, be gullible to the, you know, any misuse of the AI. That's a very, or, or of the advanced technology, that's very, very important. And what is more Im important is the supervision of the central bank, supervision of the government on the regulatory authorities of a different scenario, and it has to be very proactive before it's too late. And that's an, is my thought process. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Debashi. So where do you think organizations can start? Because uh, adoption of AI, right, is growing by the minute. You know, it's very exciting market numbers, right? How every organization now, small, medium, uh, of course, large, adapting more and more AI platforms. So question is, where should they start? Where do you want them to, yeah, to actually find the resources for ethical AI? Because, of course, regulations will be behind for many months, if not years. All right. So right now, technology is out. Right, and at the hands of experts, and we know that it's not always right in the best of humanity or even consumer sake. So, where do you think companies should start? Uh, the, I think that's a really, really tricky question because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, I, I really appreciate it. and tricky question is really is is spot on. It, it should be very. We should have the high priority item for all the agendas mm -hmm. across the board, whether it's a regulator, whether it's a government, whether it's a people, so. Any of the you know the uh, the consumer forums. So one of the key things that you know the uh, the machine learning e e even even when I log into I'm not naming any of the the social media platform other social media platform uh, when I can open I can understand they have access of the my machine learning because it, it, you know that so it means that they know my behavior and predicting and and one of the key challenges that that is the the principle number one. The, of this, the documents I'm talking about, actually I shared and every, the medias where I shared actually the links in Twitter or other. So uh, the European Commission was very, in 2019, they also come out this, this, this ethical principle. There's a principle number one, that uh, they, they should not be, AI should not be used to coerce or manipulate or influence decisions. So that, is the, that is the way we need to have because consumer awareness of this AI part or whether they will, because AI is so advanced. Uh, even uh, I'm educated, they can take me over actually. So uh, it is, it is, the, it is the, the point of the, the, the learning, the deep learning they have and other things that in other technologies, like for example, even GPT-3 will paint in the poet, I mean, I can write in poetry actually, to be honest, and somebody will send my poetry, I'll think maybe uh, somebody else has sent it to me some beautiful poetry. So it means that, now, uh, what is most important, uh, Irin, is that uh, driving uh, the, the awareness of the peoples, uh, consumer level, all level, the, what is AI and how it is in your current process when you are looking and opening a website, how it can give you, influence your decisions. So it's most important you need to take a judicious decision, which is your decisions. Uh, so in the marketing overall principle obviously will influence you, but if it's so advanced, if you, if you can defeat your brain, that will be, uh, you know, the, your more and more it will defeat your brain, uh, your thought process more and more you will be gullible. So that is a, one of the challenges we to have to be, uh, to some extent, smarter in terms. I'm not saying smarter than AI, but I'm saying to some some extent smarter so that we can make the right decisions. This is my thought, I think. I love this point you're making because we're all hearing how machines getting smarter, 
okay? And the progress is beyond geometrical, the progress from a few years ago to every AI, every app we're using right now, infused with the AI insights, infused with our behavior points, right? But what you just mentioned is really made my day that people will have to get smarter, okay? To live in this new wonderful world, to take the opportunity, right, to improve everyone's economic situation. We're going to talk about digital economy in a second here, but we have to get smarter. So it's not a free ride for uh, for everyone just exactly. enjoying backseat, right? So what's your point of how uh, human intelligence can propel us to a better future? Exactly, exactly. And that's a, one of the points, Irene, you have a great role. I really appreciate it because you're driving into different social media. You can follow, I follow you in, in LinkedIn as well. So... Uh, this is, there should be the people like you who will be more engaging, uh, like all the medias, uh, the LinkedIn, social, Twitter, uh, even Facebook. So something that the you know, thought leadership, which will engaging the people, should tell them, uh, they should help them educate. So I'll not say educate them, help them to educate themselves uh, in a better fashion. To You need to understand, obviously, we use any of the technology has the plus and minus point. You have to be uh, smarter. Only things that if you do smart, it will help you to grow to further. So uh, we are obviously we're going to Mars because I'm <laughs> Elon Musk. I'm a fan of Elon Musk, so I always see the rockets. But you know that if somebody is flying the rockets, where everybody is sitting in a village or everybody is sitting in a in a town or even in the city and sitting in the in the televisions, which is next to me, so they should think about why do you sit in overall different world order metaverse driven or what you can say metaphy or this metaverse uh, the new world order what we saying because the way we become smarter uh, the smarter in the thought process the way we will drive the overall our you know the individual as well the collective consciousness that's my thought Beautiful, beautiful. Let's stop a little bit on NFTs, you know, digital economy, because it seems like, and the moment you start, you know, searching for NFTs in Google, bunch of links shows up in a way that NFTs, it's passive income, it's for everyone, get rich fast. I'm just translating very vulgar, very common kind of interpretation. So why don't we, uh, instead of warning people from staying away from the new topics, why don't we shed some light in a way that non-fungible tokens, are they for artists only? Enterprises should to care about this or regular consumers what's the kind of you know what is it the lighting lighting points out there for everyone mm-hmm. you know that's a really brilliant question is, is this also i will say that's what i'm here for questions. that's what i'm here yeah, for yeah. i have a lot of questions because <laughs> the machine, yes you are a mentor to fintech right you you are on top of tech trends but to me it's very important to talk to what it means to everyone you know, no matter if you are already part of tech world, if you're outside of tech world, or if you're in the village, okay, if you're out there and figuring out, right, the ways to get, yeah, get uh, uh, your take in this digital economy. So, so uh, some time back, uh, I shared a couple of blocks. There's a very good research document by Block, the team blocks. Mm-hmm. So they talk about the trends uh, uh, and how it has been. So. What is most important, uh, Irene, you need to know that uh, there is a huge transactions happening and uh, mostly the cryptocurrencies, uh, the many cases is unregulated. So I'm not talking about uh, regulations. I'm saying about that uh, the cryptocurrency, the volume, how many transactions is, uh, is, is not because it's not uh, within a, 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 which is monitor system. So there's huge transactions. So what is most important, you need to have a framework uh, to go for a fast. You cannot stop. You cannot stop my thought process, the, the, the future. This is the future, actually. So what we have to do, we can make a more uh, transition in a first manner control, like for the, C, the CBDC, they have come out with a framework. And then, obviously, you need to have uh, a framework because ultimately, uh, when you have the, the cryptocurrencies, so your cross current uh, country payments and other parts could be huge impacts. And actually, we even, even uh, the, how the, there is a lot of you know, the restriction that we have 
for transfer of the monies because uh, we have uh, the AML and CFT just a different. So, so there, there are a lot of things that we need to come out of uh, the framework, which is most important. And they have come out. Many of the cases, many of the countries have come out. They understand the reality and they are not far behind. So they have to come out with, the, with how you will go for a roadmap for a cryptocurrency because there is a generation of the cryptocurrency. I mean, they have come. So uh, whether it's, you can call the Bitcoins or Ethereum or I any other, they would come out with that. So what we need to have uh, that uh, a, a country-wise and all the way I mean, inter interconnected, uh, I mean, the several regulatory bodies, a roadmaps, how this is being implemented because this is the, this is the future. You cannot uh, say no because obviously if you say no, so, so some of the countries I don't want to name that they do not make it legal the cryptocurrency, but there's a huge the transaction in the countries. Even the government has uh, has reported in the in the in the couple of documents the total reported current uh, transactions. So it means that uh, somewhere uh, that something is a reality where you cannot control, uh, you cannot keep down. So you need to have a transitions plan uh, to phase out manner. How we'll do that? so that you can integrate your total currency, I mean, the payment system or transaction system in a bit. And with, this is the one of the things that uh, the DeFi is coming into place and DeFi is the future. So uh, nobody can, uh, you know, the, keep away from the future, but one of the, and there is also another challenges, uh, Irene. So when they talk about the crypto, so many people say that there's a way I can uh, do, make money and it, it will be, they will be also susceptible to the, the people who are unscrupulous people. So who want to make money? So, so it means that there is also the lack of the consciousness. Consciousness means that awareness or you can say the right, you know, the cryptocurrency literacy, I'm, I would say that this is the, re the main, main reasons being that uh, something is, is, show, is showed as something like it's not very you know, acceptable. So, from the regulator side, from the government side, or the regulatory body side, there should be a proper awareness, uh, which will be cascaded down to the consumers mostly. So they should not lose because many of the people they have the very hard on money in. So, and their people are all struggling, especially the COVID, the economic slowdown, and other parts. So they were obviously everywhere wants to some make money. They may not be greedy, but they are ambitious. But if they have their hard-earned money, they will invest it in cryptocurrency and lost that. So it will be a disaster. So, uh, so what is the, the risk and how the regulation that will something that we need to know, number one. And number two is what you are saying, right? The cryptocurrency is also so many portals, so many, but there is not a, uh, a, a, a regulatory or driven awareness, which is most important, even the regulator do not accept, like for example, Basel have come out with a couple of guidelines, right? I mean, so guidelines, sorry, uh, come out papers, uh, consultation papers. So the, even the country level, they should come out with the papers, not only for the financial institutions and others, but for the general public, which is very important to general, because even if even many of the people, one of the friends, they ask me how the cryptocurrency, I said, I'm not a cryptocurrency expert. <laughs> so uh, you, you educate yourself. Uh, first that, what is that, right, good, bad, and do that one. So this is all levels of talking about uh, the, you know, the awareness. That's the key things, mass awareness. Ooh, these are one of the reasons I try to be very active. So not only there is exchange of information and mutual uh, mutual uh, enlightenment. We call it, not thought which I say, call it mutual enlightenment on different things. So that's a way we can do. And cryptocurrency, another part, I also, I always say that you can ban that, my thought process, but people should know that what you are banning and why it's banning. So this message was not going down to the general public who are actually tempting to get cryptocurrency and many also lost.
Yep, yep, Debashis. Wow, yeah, that's that's a lot to think about. So to me, the main message from this segment of our talk is really we have the responsibilities before we uh, join any endeavor or before we start something new, especially in technology world, especially because opportunities are everywhere right now. So we do owe to ourselves, to our families, to everyone who depends on us to aware, to be aware, right? To educate ourselves. So don't jump, don't jump. Uh, you know, off the cliff into new endeavor, especially around financial transactions, if you don't understand what this world is about. So one step at a time, and that's what we're doing with this talk, Debashis. I do appreciate very much you sharing this insight. So in the conclusion, can we maybe leave our audience with few takeaways to summarize what we talked about, you know, from glitzy metaverse opportunity out there to NFTs, cryptos, uh, artificial intelligence, the trustworthiness in this world, right? And AGI. So what would be the takeaways you want to leave our audience with? So that's a, that's a, that's a also a brilliant thoughts, uh, Arin. So uh, the, if I prioritize a couple of points, that will be the key takeaway is, first of all, the trust or the AI. Uh, the trust for the artificial intelligence is 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 most important because AI will drive everything, couple of everything. So if the AI is not trust by worthy, we are uh, we are we are going to fail. I mean, uh, we are going to get defeated, and that's uh, that will be disastrous. So we need to have the trust for the AI and a proper the framework and a implementable framework for that. This is number one. Number two is that what is most important is that uh, the take awareness of masses, and that is should be dri uh, actually the driven by the different levels, the government levels, other organization levels, and all levels, thought leadership levels, and students levels, uh, especially the tech where the key tech trends where uh, we need to be smarter uh, in all the way because being smarter. In, uh, I mean, being able to be survived in a better way. Second point, this is the second point, I'll think that that is the awareness part and where everybody has a self responsibility. And the third of the point is uh, one of the most important that uh, the central bank digital currency, this is a reality. So it has to come out. Uh, I mean, it has to be the properly, it, it will come out very soon. So how the different the markets or the countries will the interoperability of different the payment system of the different countries and how CDBs will uh, central bank digital currency will fit in in overall so that is the framework we need to have more you know the faster way first implementation plan which will be a global because after that the the, the it will not break and it will be more and more integrated world order rather than it will be silos in country. Number four is that the blockchain and the, you can say non-fungible tokens. The non-fungible tokens and other points, it will, it will take over. We cannot stop them. So, so we need to, need to be ready today or you, it will be, we, will, we will be lost. So NFT, it will take over everywhere. So this part and DFE, everything you, you have to be proactive, not only individually and organization, but overall perspective. The third part is that the metaverse. So metaverse, one of the things I'm telling you is that the metaverse, uh, I, I, I'm little, uh, I'm, I'm really the fan of it, but I'm also a little bit cautious because metaverse, if we engage in such a way, you, you should not have your consumer I mean, consciousness or consumer mindset to independently, that's, that's the same trust what you, uh, the, the ethical principle one, independent. So if you get more engagement the, in any of the cases, especially when you have taken a bind decisions. So if you are so influenced, you will make a wrong decisions. So the platform, when it is changing a different platform, different experience for a integrated, uh, so the, the, AR or VR, but you have to, you should not, they should not take over the, your brain. The last one is that my thought process, my, my understanding, uh, because with many people, is questions. I, I, I believe we are moving towards AGI. AGI is a different you know, explanations. 
Uh, people say that because I have a different view so of the AGI. What AGI means, that's the main thing. So uh, because as they perceived long time back, the Nikola Telsa uh, and later on, and I also, uh, I, I'm also a fan of Mishik Kaku, actually, we this called equation part, you must have heard of that. So when we are moving to that, that part, so we have to be very careful of the trust toward the AI. That's the first point. We are moving to an at very, very advanced artificial intelligence, and it, it will take over everything. And we cannot stop. But they should not beat us. Uh, if they beat us, and if it's not ethical, it will be disastrous. That's the last takeaway. So we need to have a concerted effort, especially the Lex Friedman. They have already, Mishai Kaku, they have already taken a lot of initiative across the global. League. So it should be a global movement to we can use. And uh, I believe that use also, you know, the Elon Musk is also on the same, same because I, 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 I am a fan of his uh, interviews, actually. He said that we have, to, uh, uh, we have to be cautious. So we have to be cautious about the, the more advanced AI, whatever call it, you can scale it, call it AGI or whatever, which is better than GPT-3. Uh, so that's an, that's an overall takeaway. So, and the last takeaway, which is overarching, we have to think smart. If we have to think smart, we, it will be better for the mankind, for the ethical mankind. Thank you. Thank you, Debashi. That's a lot to think about. So looking forward to exciting, incredible 2022 with all the opportunities out there, with risks and challenges to solve. It's a lot to do in 2022 for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so very much for being part of Soga Talks today. I encourage everyone to follow Debashis. He has wonderful Twitter feeds. He has wonderful insights sharing on LinkedIn. So follow Debashis. He is wealth of knowledge in fintech, NFTs, metaverse, AI, and everything we talked about today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great day, great evening.